We are going on a little bit of a crop tour this evening. Just got back from the lake. Gonna go scout some fields, see how things are looking. This is one of the canola fields, and as you can see, it has started to bloom. It's actually been blooming for quite a while now. Um, it's not, it's very close to full bloom, I would say. Still a few more flowers to pop out, but it looks okay. This is Invigor 340. There's quite a few flowers already on the plant. Still more flowers to bloom. And then the pods are starting to form. They go in here. These pods are starting to form here. So there'll be pods on all these branches eventually. It looks decent for the amount of rain we've had here. Um, certainly better than last year, but it's, it's definitely late. It's late staging, so this canola's this canola's got to get going. Hopefully, we get something out of it. So since the last time we checked in, it was just these bottom leaves, and then it shot up this bolt in the middle of the plant, and then has started flowering here. So it'll flower for a couple weeks, and then these pods, the canola pods will start to form and then fill with the black seed. Not sure what happened to these guys. It's like a lawnmower clipped them off. Almost looks like a, like hail, but there's nothing around it. So I'm not sure what happened to, not sure what happened here. Must have got chewed off. I know that we had some thunder showers roll through, but just a little bit of rain and, and wind, so nothing too major in terms of hail damage. A tornado did touch down by Blaine Lake though, which is like 40 minutes north of here. I've walked through canola fields that are like chest height. This one is like just past my knee. The peas look good in a lot of places but then other places a little shaky. I'll show you a good place. So these are the peas. I sprayed these last week for disease actually. Um, seems like if you don't spray them, they just fall over. So I sprayed almost all of these three quarters here, left out some spots. There's lots of flowers now. I sprayed them at early flower and then the pods are starting to form. I saw a couple. Yeah, like here. There's some pods. Just early potting, nothing in it yet. Lots of flowers though, actually. So they grow, they tangle themselves together to help stand can shake them here and it moves way out there they just intertwine themselves together to help stand but right here it looks not too bad so these tracks will stay here now and I'll follow them for when I come back in here to to desiccate hello oh both of you come here Oh, you guys are so crazy. You're so crazy. Hey, watch the wheat. Watch my wheat. Get out of there. <laughs> are you playing? Are you playing? Oh, jeez. Oh, there's going to be nothing left. Can't even see him. <laughs> Only this guy. <laughs> Go play on the road. This wheat is fully headed out. And it has started to flower. So at this stage, now there's flowers on the wheat head called anthers which is your 
which is your fusarium head blight timing. Fusarium is a disease found in the wheat head. Oh yeah, look at all these flowers here. That can inhibit yield, and if it's bad enough, uh, you can't even sell it. The timing would be good to spray probably starting tomorrow morning or within the next few days if it's calm. Um, when these flowers are out or these anthers as your fusarium head blight timing. Just not sure if we're going to spray or not. Not a lot of moisture so not a lot of disease pressure but I mean the wheat crop does look fairly decent. It's hanging on for as little moisture as we've had. So we just have to weigh the costs associated with spraying, the product itself, the fuel, the tracks, or not spraying. You need at least a few bushels um, to pay for it, but I think you would get that back. It usually, it usually helps quite a bit. It's protecting, it, it's protecting the yield that's already there. It's not giving it a boost. It's just protecting, it's just protecting what's there. I'm going spraying. We changed the tires last week. I forgot to say that to the uh, skinny tires, so a little bit less of a track. And I'm spraying Tilmore. There is two important factors when spraying for fusarium head blight. The one I just talked about, which is the timing of it. Those flowers need to be present on that wheat head. If you're too early or too late, it won't be as effective. The second important factor is actually having a dual fan spray nozzle. So this is an 05 uh, turbo twin jet. So it's a 10 gallon nozzle, but there's two five gallon nozzles within it. So there's two spray patterns. So the idea with the dual fan nozzle is targeting the wheat head. As you pass over, it'll spray the right side of the wheat head and then the other angle will spray the left side of the wheat head, getting both sides of the head to target that fusarium. If you just had the normal flat fan nozzle and you passed over the wheat head, it would just get one side of the head and not the other side. So this way we can target both sides of the head, getting way better coverage. I also want to run my booms fairly low, about one foot over the wheat head. That way it takes advantage of the two spray angles of the nozzle. If I'm too high, uh, the product will just get caught in the wind and it'll lose its angle. This way, if I'm low, it'll have a better angle on that wheat head and get both sides of it. So I'm gonna lower my booms even a little bit more than they are right now. I just don't wanna get caught in the wheat. If the boom sinks into the wheat as you're, grow as you're going, It'll snag and it can uh, it can bend your boom, so you got to be careful. Now I've heard that these twin jet nozzles don't have enough of a spray angle to actually paint both sides of the wheat head. Some people use an adapter and an extension from the nozzle body to actually have two normal flat fan nozzles that point almost straight, like horizontal. And that's enough of a spray angle to get both sides of the wheat, but that sounds a little bit intense. So I'm just using these um, twin jet nozzles. I think they're pretty good. Like I can see that the angle is getting both sides of the wheat. So we're gonna try this. I haven't sprayed a fungicide in wheat for a couple years now, just because it's been dry. So we'll see how this goes. I need about three bushels of an increase in yield for this to pay. I need at least two bushels to um, pay for the product just with the price of wheat and then just with the fuel and time to do this. So yeah, I'm calling it three bushels to break even. So I hope I get that. And I think I said this already, but I'm not boosting yield really. I'm just protecting what's already there. I'm just maximizing this wheat's potential. I think it's worth it to spray. Like this wheat looks not too bad at all. Got a couple more thunder showers maybe this week. It is supposed to be hot, but you know something ticks up. Get another half inch or something, and and then this this spray will be worth it. So I'm gonna spray it. See how it works out. Spraying at 11 gallons, so doing 120 acres on this field. 
so it won't get it all done there's some power poles at the south end that i won't have to twist around so we'll go with that these tracks will be here now and then i gotta drive this track when i desiccate in the fall so i want to hit my headland pass drive in this track and then hit my line when i hit my auto steer try not to tramp out any more than I have to. This will be my last pass, so I'm not gonna do any of these power poles here. There's only like three passes left. Uh, so that will be my untreated check. The rest will be my treated. So hopefully there's a yield difference come harvest time. Uh, at least three bushels. And if there isn't, then it'll be some sort of test that we might have made a bad decision but at least I got to show you guys what kind of goes on during this stage. I'm not sure if this field is going to be next. Driving by it looks pretty good but it's, it's kind of borderline I'd say. The canola we don't really spray a fungicide on unless it's like super super heavy and really wet but the canola looks very poor across the board so that guy's not going to get anything. Seven, seven pods. I'm eating them. Holy! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm gonna go over here and eat. What's your early estimate yield? If we don't get any rain, yeah. Uh, thirty. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was kind of thinking thirty across the board. Usually, P whatever the P yield up, the wheat will yield. There's lots of flowers here too. Like, there's no leaf disease like the plants look very healthy yeah don't know if it'll pay you need to get three or four bushels an acre extra just to break even yeah right because you're gonna tramp out a lot and and a guy doesn't do it for free see it's not like it's not bone dry here you know because that still clumps together yeah like this wheat is rooted down. Cause that's just that's just that's not at the roots yet. Cause this is probably at the roots. See, I just feel that. Like it's not that's what? It's not bone dry, it's don't see any wild oats coming here, but well, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, but we're going like this. As I say, we're like three quarters, 20 mils to 25 mils away from this going 40. In the next, like, probably 10 days. <laughs> 